Well, I'm Walter Evans, and uh, my career was as a general surgeon. I'm from Savannah, Georgia, in the United States, and my career as a surgeon was in Detroit, Michigan. I began collecting uh, just after my career began. Prior to that time, I didn't have the means, but I had studied about art, books, manuscripts, and I had done a lot of reading and going to museums prior to my collecting. So this collection started in the mid to late 1970s, and um, I've been doing it until I retired to my hometown of Savannah, Georgia. And this is my wife, Linda. Yes, I'm Linda. And I think it's important to mention that Walter first started collecting art when he had young daughters and he wanted his daughters to be able to see art by African American artists on the walls of his home. And after he started purchasing art, he got to know some of the artists personally and they exchanged letters. He started um, reading more and more about artists and collecting books about the art and about the artists. And that kind of grew into a, I don't want to say hobby, as an obsession. An advocation. A, a passion for black culture in all its forms. What Linda did not mention is that, yes, I wanted my daughters to see uh, African-American art and read about the African-American experience and the African diaspora, but because you could not find this in the museums. The museum may have owned some African-American art, but they rarely showed it. And I wanted them to see that we had African-American artists um, that were just as uh, qualified to be in the museums, but because of, you know, they were black, that they just weren't showing it at the time. Well, I'll start with um, the earliest piece, which was what I call a proclamation by Toussaint, who at the time was Toussaint Breda. He, the Breda came from the plantation that he grew up on, um, and he was telling uh, the folks, this was in 1793, um, he, he did not start, he did not join the Haitian Revolution at the beginning. Uh, he joined it after it was in progress, and, and he became a leader of this revolution. And he was telling the people in this proclamation that, follow me and I will open a door for you. And hence, he became Toussaint Louverture. So that was the first uh, item. The second item was um, a letter that Toussaint wrote to Julian Raymond. And um, Julian Raymond was a commissioner who, um, he was not a fighter like the other Haitian rebels. Uh, he was more an intellectual and a wealthy one. He was uh, of mixed race, but he was very wealthy. Uh, but he was also for the abolition of uh, slavery. And in this letter, Toussaint was telling him that, um, or asking for his advice on expelling certain people from the colony uh, because they were not in support of, of the... Um, of the uh, rebellion or the revolution. Now, the third item was uh, a very official letter, uh, which was written here in France by Napoleon Bonaparte. And in this letter, he was, which was to be delivered by uh, Napoleon's brother-in-law, who was um, uh, designated in this letter to be the um, uh, Captain General, uh, and he was on the flagship of 54 slave ships, and I believe it was the largest armada to cross the Atlantic. And the real reason for the letter, uh, or the reason, real reason for these uh, uh, ships to cross the Atlantic 
was to recapture the island which Toussaint and his revolutionaries had already taken uh, control of, uh, of, uh, of Haiti. So, uh, uh, Santo Domingo at the time. Now, in the letter, he described Toussaint as a great black general. And he said that we're proud of you, of what you have done. You have defeated the Spanish and the British. And we are sending these 23,000 soldiers to help you keep control from other outside uh, uh, interests. In other words, the British and the Spanish. Uh, but in reality, he was coming to seize the island back that Tucson and his rebels had taken control of. Uh, the other reason he was sending these soldiers and his brother-in-law, Leclerc, to Haiti was to um, was because Toussaint and Raymond, uh, uh, Julian Raymond, had written up a constitution, and he was telling Toussaint that we already have a constitution here in uh, in uh, France, and you are covered by our constitution, by our constitution, uh, which was a faint, you know, it was. Uh, and Raymond is someone I call the James Madison um, of uh, you know of the U.S. because he had written up. Uh, Raymond had been the intellectual behind the Constitution uh, in Haiti. So for those reasons, uh, he was sending this letter, and uh, this letter is in the um, is in the exhibition now at the uh, Pantheon. So those are the three letters. <laughs> Well, now, uh, I think it is vitally important, uh, especially here in France, because I don't think the French people realize the French involvement in, you know, in the enslavement of African people to the extent that they should be. Um, and it would be important globally, but especially here. Uh, and I think they should know the history uh, so as not to be repeated. Uh, as I think something of that nature is occurring in the United States. We don't want to um, repeat the past as it relates to slavery. Uh, and, and for that reason, they should know this very important past. And I think... Um, May I add something? Ex ex please. Um, this exhibition when you look at the, the items that are there for you to uh, explore, there are many, many original source documents. This isn't lore, this isn't oral history. These are the actual documents that lay out what the thinking was at the time, lay out the plans for um, this what's resulted in a history of enslavement. And anyone who has um, done any research or uh, studied history understands that when you go to the source documents, the original documents, those are the facts. And everything else is, is built on that. And it's important, I think, for people to come to a place to see things that have been gathered together that lay out the framework for what has happened and explains in great detail how we've ended up where we are. It, it means, um, dare to be free, to me it means that we um, as a people um, have always wanted to be free. We wanted these are, uh, you know, giant states, giant uh, countries to live up to their words, you know, liberty, egalitarian fraternity, and the United States, um, you know, mm -hmm. the declaration all of all men are created equal. None of these countries have, have really lived up to those ideals. 
But what this, what this um, exhibition does is show that we have always wanted to be free as the documents uh, gave us to all people, but have never really lived up to these ideals. And I think this exhibition shows that. Mm -hmm. Any place where Africans were enslaved, you'll find people who dared to buck the system, so to speak, and take chances and, and sacrifice for their freedom, no matter where they were enslaved. And this, this exhibition helps to demonstrate that. Thank you.